Michael Schuster. I'm an IBM senior engineer here at Curie, and I'm here to show you how to set up an HMC. This is the back of an HMC. Um, this particular model, it has actually four Ethernet ports here. You get, they're labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4. The one that's labeled IMM is for IBM only, so we're not going to use that. Um, you also have your uh, USB ports here. Uh, normally, uh, one will be one of the Ethernet ports will go out to uh, for you to log in, and your second one will be going to the IBM servers that you're going to be using on the HMC. The other two can be for redundancy, and that's about it for the back of the HMC. Like once again, normally we use ports one and two to uh, set you up. Okay, so this is the screen for the uh, HMC once you've booted it up. And so we're going to log into it here. Uh, you can also see the version. Version 8, revision 8. Uh, and then this is just uh, the minor. And this is 3.0.0. .0. So if it, somebody ever asks you, it's also up here in the top of the box if you need to know what version you're running. So we're going to click on here, launch it. It's going to ask you here for your username and password. So the first time you're going to log in, your default name and password. Default login is HSC root. I'm going to come down here to your password. Default password is A B C one two three. Sometimes people have one two three four on there, um, but by default. By IBM right now, it's ABC123. Let me go ahead and log in. And this is your login page. Uh, this little tip of the day, if you want it, um, right now, since it's a new machine, I'm just going to close it. So, right now, you have your systems, and this has been set up before, so. You have your systems management. So you got your servers. These are going to be the P series servers you connect to. So when I click on servers, it's going to take me to the server screen and it's looking for a particular server. It's got this IP address that it was once connected to. We don't have it connected right now. But I will show you before we even get into any of that, we're going to set up your HMC. So we want to go to HMC management. And here you can change all the elements that you want. You got restricted shell terminal if you know how to use it. Open console 2550 if you know how to use it. But the big thing is change your network settings. So this is where we're going to set up our network at. So we're going to go to LAN adapters. Now on the back I showed you four Ethernet ports. On here it shows you Ethernet 0 through 3. Well. Ethernet 1 is actually going to be 0, 2 is going to be 1, so on and so forth. So for our first one, we're going to go here and we're going to click Details. We're going to make this open. And down here, this is Ethernet 1 is going to be the one you log into. So once you make it open, you go down here and we got Specify IP Address. And you can put in the IP address, DHCP if you want it, but I wouldn't recommend it. So for us to log in, we got 192, 168, 128, 100. So if I have a laptop set up that's on the same network as this, I would make I would put HTTPS in the IP address. If HTTPS doesn't work, try HTTP, but it should be HTTPS. Put this in, and then you'll get the login screen that you uh, received prior to this. So we're going to cancel out of this IP address and go to the second IP address. This is the one that connects to your power systems. Recommended, you have one Ethernet coming out of here and going to a switch, and then the switch goes to each of the systems that you have connected. So the details on this is going to be a private network, and you're going to enable DHCP. This is going to be the drop-down menu of the DHCP pool range that you can pick from. Um, we decided to pick 10.0.0.2 through 254, and we leave it like that. So when before you apply power to your power systems, you need to have an Ethernet plugged into HMC 1 or 2 on the P-Series or the I-Series server. 
once you have that plugged in, then you plug power into the system. Do not have the power plugged in before because it's going to revert back to the original D IP address that it was in production. So once you plug it in, it will go out to the DHCP server, find out there's a DHCP pool out there, and set it up uh, corresponding to the pool, and then the system will actually pick it up after a while. So you need to have that set like this. Once you have all that done, then you're going to go down here to looking for the remote systems. I, my remote systems are down here under administration. So you got remote command execution. You'll want to enable this. Then you have remote virtual terminal. You'll want to enable this too. Then you have remote operations and you'll want to enable this. You need to have all three of these enabled in order for you to log into the HMC and be able to control any of the systems that are on the HMC. Without those enabled, you're going to log in and you won't be able to do anything. So you have to have all these turned on in order for that to work. You also got shutdown schedule operations. There's a lot of other stuff here, but basically we're here today just to set this part up. Once you have it all set up and you have your first power system up, you'll plug an Ethernet from port 2 to a switch from the switch to the HMC1 on the back of the system. Once that's plugged in, the system will go out and grab its IP address. In this case, it took the very first one, 10.0.0.2, and the system will be assigned that. Once you're on there, you'll be able to connect with the system. I'm going to hook up the system, and on our next uh, clip, you'll see that it's connected. Okay, so what you see here is uh, I hooked up a power system. It's already recognized it. So if I go down here to properties, it gives me the serial number of the system, the model number of the system, the state that it's in, the, and the service processor version. You can also do power on perimeters, capabilities, and this will tell you if you have COD capability, virtual I.O. server, any of these things are enabled. Sometimes these won't update until after the box is powered on. So what might say false now might become true. The advanced tab is uh, messing around with page memory, which normally nobody wants to do. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand it down here and power on the system. There is multiple ways to do it, but we're just doing normal for this time around. I'm going to hit OK. This should take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes to power on, which of course we're not going to have the camera going then. You'll see the available processing units, the memory, and the reference code while it's booting up. It is when it comes to a standby state on the status, that was when you know it's ready and we'll come on from there. So you see here, I got the system powered up. Of course, it aired out because we're running on 110 in this room and the system likes to run on 220, so I'm getting errors here. But normally your system would come up when you have the right power and bring you up to um, a standby state. With the standby state, once it's on, some of these menu options open up. And the one I want to show you is the launch the advanced systems management or the ASM. And what this does is this is basically like your CMOS for your power system. So once you go into here, I'm going to open this up full screen. Over here on the side is going to be your firmware level of what you're currently running. And then we're going to use your ID to log in. The default login is admin, A-D-M-I-N. And your password is going to be the same, A D. M I N. Now here you're going to have same thing you could get system serial number, your date, your time, and all this stuff. If you have capacity on demand, you're going to open up this demand menus, and right here you're going to see COD order information. This is the stuff that, of course, since it's not up to standby mode, I can't get it. But 
This will be the stuff that you get to order your COD activations here. I'm also going to go here and look at the error log events under system servicing. This is going to be telling me what's wrong with the system. Of course, there's your power supply and why it's not letting me boot up. You can check these individually and show the details on them. For us right now, we're just going to clear this out because I'm just basically showing you guys how this works. Your power controls are here too. And there's a lot of other stuff on here. Virtual system configuration, hardware, such things as, as that. But that's basically uh, what I'm showing you is just basically how to get into this. Over here you also see the, the type of logins you can do. There's the CE logins for the IBM and the dev for the IB, for IBM CEs. Um, people want to know how to make your LPARs. If this was at a standby state, you'll have a menu down here that will allow you to collect your LPARs and set up your LPARs. But I do not have that ability right now because the system won't come up. So I'm just going to power it off. And we'll probably make a video on how to create a simple LPAR next time we do another one of these. You can do a normal fast power off. I just do a normal and the system will come down. And that's basically how you set up an HMC and connect your power system box to it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informational.